My name is Brian Mercier. I'm a professional Catholic speaker, author, and Catholic apologist. I love to share the good news of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ saved my life and changed my life upside down, inside out for the better. And now I want to make it my mission to share that with the world, to share God's love with the whole world. Many years ago, you might not know it by looking at me, but I used to dress in all black. I used to dress in all black from head to toe and I used to carry weapons and I used to want to hurt people. I was very angry, I was very depressed, I was bullied a lot in school, I was made fun of, and I had a lot of problems that I didn't really know what to do with. So I started keeping the problems inside and I started bottling them up and I just stuffed them down inside and kept stuffing them and I didn't know what to do with them until I became incredibly angry, incredibly hateful. I mean, I was a good kid, I still went to church, I still prayed my rosary every day, I still did what I was supposed to with God and I I believe that's why he saved me, but I was like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I had two different sides of me. One day I could be a perfectly nice kid, but if something snapped in my mind, I would go very, very dark. And I was very depressed. In fact, I hated myself. I had the most rock bottom self-esteem. I didn't even look in the mirror for seven years because I literally hated myself. I thought I was the ugliest person on planet Earth and I couldn't stand to look at myself. And, and it was a reflection of my life. I couldn't stand to look at my life and how much I didn't like it. I was so unhappy. I was so empty. I felt like I was carrying around a thousand pound heart every day of my life. And you know what? God didn't make us to live that way. But yet I prayed to God every day and he didn't seem to answer my prayers. Maybe out there many of you can relate to that. You've prayed for years and years and you've felt nothing. You haven't felt God in your life and you wonder where is God? I felt the same exact thing. You know what? I was filled with sin. I was filled with hate. God wanted to come into my life, but he, there was no room. I filled it up with all of this other stuff. And it wasn't until I, my mom sent me out to a college before I did something drastic. She threatened to call the cops on me many times, but instead of calling the cops on her son, she decided to send me out to a Catholic school, the most Catholic college in all of America, or at least one of them, Franciscan University of Steubenville, and she wanted to get some more Jesus in me because she knew that Jesus was our savior. She knew that Jesus could save me from my sins, and she prayed for me every single day. And even out there, I was writing dark poems about killing people, sometimes about killing people very slowly and methodically. My mind was very dark. The only reason I didn't blow up a school or do something drastic is because, number one, I didn't want to get punished by my dad and go to jail, and number two, I didn't want to go to hell. So it's my religion that kept me on the straight and narrow even when I didn't, you know, live it fully all the time. But it was out at this college that I was going to experience the life-changing love of Jesus Christ, who was going to make me into the person that I am today. And I was out at this school, Franciscan University. It was a different type of school. It was a little bit more charismatic. Some people are traditional, some people are charismatic. They put their hands in the air and they just gave their whole self to God. And I thought that that was completely bizarre. I didn't like it, to be honest with you. It made me feel uncomfortable and I wasn't used to praying that way. But one day when I was in church, I was in the fifth pew from the front and I felt a strong urging that God wanted me to put my hands up in the air. And being the good Christian that I was, I told God, no, he didn't make me but he took a chance and he, and I never really felt God work in my life, but for the first time, I felt like God was saying, just give me a chance, just give me a chance, put your hands up. So I said, fine, God, if it's gonna make you happy, I'll put my hands up in the air, all right. So I did it a little bit, not like all the other people that I made fun of, just a little bit, but it was that moment that changed my life. And looking back, I realized, what if someone came up to you and stuck a gun into your back and said, stick him up? What would you do? You say, I give up, don't shoot, I surrender, I surrender, and I realized in that moment that all God wanted me to do was surrender my pain to him, surrender my anger, my hate, my revenge, everything that was in me, my depression, all the darkness. He wanted me to surrender that to him. He basically said, Brian, you're way too young to be this angry. I didn't make you for this. I made you for so much more. And I had a, a picture of what heaven's like. I'm not going to say I saw heaven, but God gave me a picture of what it's like. And that moment changed my life. It, God hit me like like a ton of bricks. Sometimes God works in people's lives. It's like a slow drop on a rock. 
year after year, and eventually, slowly, you see the, how God works in your life. Other people, he just comes and gives you a karate kick right off your horse. You know, he, he plows into you like a car hitting you. That's what it felt like when God hit me. It felt like a car hit me. This force just unmistakably smacked me in the head, and I had no doubt that God exists. If you ask a lot of people, does God exist? They'll say, yeah, God exists. I, I believe in him. You know, and it's theoretical. Before that, it was theoretical, but now I know God. I feel God. He works in me. In that moment and over the next year, God gave me more happiness, more peace, and more fulfillment than I ever could have found in 10 lifetimes. You can try to find all the happiness you want on earth. You can do all the meditations you want on earth, but you will never, ever be fully satisfied and at peace and completely filled with love to overflowing until you find it in Jesus Christ. And that is the day that changed my life. God turned me upside down, inside out and backwards. He literally took out all of my pain and he healed my broken heart. He took out all of my hate and he gave me an overflowing love. He took out all my sadness and he gave me a bubbling joy and a happiness. And he took out all my confusion and all my low self-esteem and he gave me peace. And I thank Jesus Christ for that because Jesus Christ is Lord. He's our savior. That's what he came into this world to do, to save us, to set us free, to break our chains, to break our addictions. That's who Jesus is. He can set anybody free. If you're a prisoner, he can set you free. If you're dead, he can raise you to new life. If you've messed up in your life and you've wasted your years and you went to prison, you did something really bad, Jesus Christ can restore the wasted years of your life. He's the only one one in this world who could take all the crooked lines, all the colors that we make, we write all over the wall, take all of that mess. He's the only one who can make it straight again. He's the only one who can forgive us and give us new life. And that's what he did to me. That was the first part of my story. The second part of my story, because I knew I loved God, but I didn't know how to live for him. I wasn't strong enough at that point. And I remember my friends, a lot of my friends kept kidding me to go back to sin, going back to doing the things that I knew I wasn't supposed to be doing. But every time I came back to college, every time I came back to Jesus, he welcomed me with open arms. He's like, Brian, I forgive you. I forgive you, start again. And then I'd go back and sin again and stab him in the back. And I'd go back to Jesus and say, I'm sorry, Jesus, I'm so sorry. And he said, Brian, I forgive you, start again, try harder. And each time I would grow stronger with Christ. And each time he would fill me with his strength until one day I thought about it and I said, all these people who are trying to get me to do wrong, to go back into darkness, they obviously don't care about me. Whereas I keep spitting at God and, and stabbing him in the back and doing all these bad things. And he he keeps loving me. He's loving me unconditionally. I said, there's no one on earth who keeps loving me like Jesus does. And so I made a commitment to Jesus and I said, Lord, I promise to live for you, only for you, all for you, for the rest of my life. I will never ever go back to the way I was living. And that was over 15 years ago and I've never gone back. I still live for Jesus Christ. I still have his fire burning in me. I still have his grace because I told God and I kind of yelled at him a little bit. I said, God, I said, I'm tired of being made fun of. I'm tired of never knowing what to say. I'm tired of being tongue-tied when I speak about you. Lord, if you want me to follow you, I mean, aren't you real? Aren't you true? Isn't the Catholic Church your church on earth? I was like, if that's true, Lord, then you're gonna give me the same Holy Spirit that you gave the apostles on Pentecost. When you filled the apostles, your followers, with your power, God, I want that power. I want that. I was asking God for a big glass of water, and he not only gave me water, he gave me a waterfall. I mean, just drenched me in his power, in his love, and I've never been the same since. I've had this fire in me that I can't get rid of. I've had this happiness with me that I can't get rid of and I don't want to get rid of because Jesus Christ is the way. Jesus Christ is the truth. Jesus Christ is the life. He is new life. He's the solution for all the problems that you face in life. He's the solution for everything you're struggling with. He's the solution for your sins. He is forgiven. He's the solution for your anger and hatred. He is healing. Jesus Christ is everything that you're looking for. And in, ever since in my life, now I go out and I speak and I give conferences and I give retreats and I write books and I do YouTube and I get the word out as much as possible because there is no other way. I tried it. I tried to find happiness in people. I tried to find happiness in parties. I tried to find happiness in addictions. Everybody does at some point, but there's a God-shaped hole in our heart 
heart. And you could try to fill it with a beer bottle. You could try to fill it with drugs. You could try to fill it with sex and pornography and all these addictions. You can try to fill it with violence and try to work your life away and try to forget about all your problems. But nothing fills the hole in your heart except God. Why? Because it's a God-shaped hole. It's not a bottle-shaped hole. It's not a sex-shaped hole. It's a God-shaped hole. And only God is big enough. The God of the universe, Jesus Christ, only he's big enough to fill that hole in our heart, that void, that loneliness, that heartache. Why do you think we get into addictions? Why do you think we get into drugs and problems? I know teenagers who are struggling with this stuff. They're in gangs and they're violent and they're angry. We have terrorists. We have all this bad stuff happening in our world today. Innocent people are dying all around the world today. We have corrupt governments who are keeping their people from being fed, even though in some countries in Africa, little kids are dying every five seconds from preventable disease and starvation. What are we doing about it? The answer is Jesus. I mean, one of my friends, he's an atheist. He doesn't believe in God. And he tried to talk me down. He actually said, Brian, look, we don't need religion anymore. The more we learn about science, the more we learn about facts, the more we learn about knowledge, the more we learn about our world, the less religious people get. We don't need God anymore. And eventually God's going to become obsolete. And so what I said to him is, I said, no, we just don't think we need God, but we do. Think about it. People are following God less today, and yet suicide is on the rise. And the numbers in the jails here in the United States are higher than ever. Uh, depression's higher than ever. All these addictions are higher than ever. I mean, the, we have everything. Here in the United States, at least, we're one of the richest societies that's ever lived. We have TVs, we have cars, we have computers. We have everything, and you know what? We're still not happy. We still have suicides, we still have jails, we still have uh, depression, we still have people who cut themselves and self-harm, people with eating disorders, people with depression. Why? Because none of that stuff makes us happy. Only God makes us happy. Someday, somewhere along the line, we have to come to that realization that only Jesus makes us happy. He's the Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace, and he's the only way to find peace in your life. Think about it. God made the world perfect, right? He made it perfect. He never wanted wars. He never wanted famines. He never wanted these disasters and hurricanes and tsunamis. He never wanted people killing each other. God made the world perfect and that's the way he wanted it. But it's us, mankind and the devil, evil, that messed up God's world. We're the ones who bring so much pain and suffering into this world, into people's lives. We're the ones who have destroyed it. God made it perfect. And yet, you know what God did? God became a man in the person of Jesus Christ to bring us back to himself. Think about that. Jesus Christ was the greatest person to ever walk the face of the earth. Ever, He's the one who claimed the most authority. He could do miracles on command. He could forgive sins. And he could raise people from the dead. Think about it. Think about this for one second. Jesus healed everybody. Name one other person who could heal people by their own power. Buddha was a great guy. He said a lot of good things, but he couldn't heal people. He couldn't forgive sins. Even in the Quran, Muhammad, they asked Muhammad, the founder of Islam, to do miracles. And you know what Muhammad said? Muhammad said, I can't, I'm only a man. And the Quran goes on to say that Jesus Christ showed that he was from God. He showed that he was from God by the miracles he worked, so do miracles for us. He said, guys, I said it once, I'll say it again. I'm just a man, I can't work miracles. And yet Jesus Christ shows us that he's more than just a man by the miracles he works. People who are blind, he could touch them and they would be completely healed on the spot. People who were deaf, he would heal with a touch. People who had diseases that were incurable, he could heal with just a word. People who were possessed by demons, he could cast them out with a word. People who were dead, he would raise them. It was not a problem. Jesus has a legacy of healing and miracles. Why? Because we were cursed in the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve ate that fruit, they were cursed. They pushed God away and they cursed this earth with all this suffering. And yet Jesus came and he reversed that curse. He healed everybody who came to him. He forgave everyone who came to him to show two things. Number one, that if we follow Jesus, he can heal the pain in your life. He can forgive the sins in your life and he can give you new life. And number two, as a foreshadowing to show that in heaven, 
When we find eternal life, this is what Jesus wants from us. Jesus wants us to be in heaven with him and there will be no more pain. There will be no more sin. There will be no more brokenness. In fact, in Revelation chapter 21 in our scriptures, it says that the first thing that Jesus is going to do when you arrive at heaven is he's going to wipe away every tear from your eye. He's going to take away all the pain from your heart. He's going to make you new and you will never experience pain again. And that's just the very first thing that Jesus Christ is going to do. The very first thing. I mean, our minds, our ears, our eyes, we can't even comprehend how wonderful heaven is going to be, but we can have an experience of it now. We can experience Jesus' love now. We can experience his peace and love and new life now. I've experienced it in my life. You can experience it in yours. If Jesus can heal me, he can heal anybody. And he's healed a lot of people who are worse than me. I mean, he's healed Satanists. I know Satanists, think about Zachary King, one of the top 10 Satanists in the world. He came back to the light. Jesus Christ got a hold of him and said, come back to the light. And he did. And now he's Catholic today and he's living for Jesus Christ and he's found peace. You think of Islamic terrorists all around the world that seem to be growing. I've heard of two. We all know Hamas, the terrorist group in the Middle East, North Africa, and that area. The son of the head of that organization converted to Christianity. He found Jesus Christ, and he said he's never found such peace and love in his whole entire life. A lot of people didn't even believe that he would convert to Christianity, and he said it's the best thing that he's ever done, and he's never been happier. I just saw a story of an Islamic terrorist who was in a jail cell. He got captured, and in jail, Jesus Christ appeared to him. Now, this presence, this power that came over him, he said, he experienced, caused him to just cry. He didn't know it was Jesus at the time. He thought it was God, Allah. And he, he, he couldn't understand it. He said it confused him because Allah doesn't offer forgiveness now. He said forgiveness for Muslims comes at the end of time. But yet he was feeling the forgiveness and the love of God. And he later learned that it was actually Jesus Christ who appeared to him, who forgave him for his sins, who gave him peace, who gave him love, who gave him more than he could ever imagine in a hundred lifetimes. And it just caused him to cry and to weep like a little baby. Even in the interviews, he just kept crying because he could not imagine that God's love would be so awesome, so wonderful, so great, so life transforming. And yet, that is exactly what he experienced. People, I know abortion doctors who have performed thousands of abortions. They got down on their knees once they realized they were murdering children, thousands of them, whole generations of them. And they say, my God, what have I done? Can you ever forgive me? And they got down on their knees and they prayed to Jesus Christ and they received forgiveness. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how bad of a past you have. Anyone can be healed by Jesus. Everyone can be healed by Jesus. That's why he came to die on the cross for us. That's why he had all his skin ripped off. That's why he had a crown of thorns puncturing at his, his head. That's why he had nails and spikes through his hands and his feet. And that's why he died one of the most painful deaths in the world to free all mankind. It's not just Christians, but Hindus and Muslims and Buddhists and people of all religions. Jesus is the savior of the world. He's the savior of mankind. He's the answer that you're looking for. He's the God that you're looking for. He's the God of all gods and he loves you. That's why he doesn't give up on you. He's calling you to himself. He's drawing you to himself. He wants you to know him because only in him can you find complete peace. Only in him can you find complete happiness. And I used to dabble a lot in martial arts and I used to get into the Eastern way of meditation and such. And that can bring you, you know, quite a bit of peace. But it's no peace compared to Jesus Christ, which actually fills you to overflowing. It surrounds you like in a bubble, consumes you, and it almost lifts you up from this world. It's divine. It's not human, it's divine. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Jesus is the only freedom from the problems of this world, from the addictions of this world, from the darkness and the evil of this world. Jesus Christ was born on Christmas day. Jesus is Christ. Christ is the Messiah and the Messiah was born to save us. Now, the choice is ours. What a great God we have. What a great God we serve but the choice is yours. God's not gonna shake you and force you to follow him, but he puts out his hands and he says, will you follow? Obedience is the path to eternal life. Love is the path to healing. 
let God love you. During this Christmas season, let God love you. Pray to him like you've never prayed before. Increase your prayer life tenfold. Go to church if you don't and start trying to find God. If you haven't been to confession in a long time and you haven't confessed your sins and got right with God, this is the perfect time to do that like no other. Live your faith and search for Jesus Christ. He says, if you seek, you will find. If you knock, the door will be open. And he is the way, the truth, and the life, and he's waiting for you. God bless you. To all of the viewers of Shalom TV throughout the world, I want to encourage you not only to support this amazing media apostolate, but to spread the word to others. We all know how the internet and mass media are polluting the world with the poison of pornography and so much other forms of materialism. This is the source of eternal life, the gospel, and Shalom TV is consecrated to spreading the word of Christ. Thank you. Shalom World, God's own channel.